Let's say that I have a contract and it has some function. For this example, I have a function 1 and function 2. If I want to call function 1 and function 2, then I will send a transaction to call function 1, wait, and then send another transaction to call function 2. We've already seen how to call multiple functions in a single function call by using multi-call. But what if we want to preserve the context, for example, message.sender? Then we will need to use delegate call. So in this video, I'll show you how to create multi-call, except we're going to be using delegate call. But why use delegate call? Why not just use multi-call? Okay, let's say that we use multi-call. Alice calls the contract multi-call. The multi-call uses the function call to call this test contract. For example, if the multi-call calls the function func1 or func2, message.sender will be equal to the multi-call contract and not Alice. But let's say that we want to do a multi-call, except that we want this message.sender to be Alice. Then we will need to use delegate call. Let's take a look at how delegate call will preserve message.sender to be equal to Alice. Again, let's say Alice will call this test contract. And inside this test contract, we'll do a multi-delegate call back into this test contract. Because we're using delegate call inside this contract, message.sender will still be equal to Alice. Okay, so let's not write the function for multi-delegate call. So call it function multi-delegate call. The only input that we're going to need is the functions to call and the parameters to pass to the function. So we'll say bytes bracket call data. I'll name it data. This function will be external payable. And we'll return the output of each function call as bytes. So we'll type returns array of bytes, memory, and I'll name it results. First, we'll initialize this result array to have the same length as data. So we'll type results is equal to new byte bracket, initialize it to the same length of data by saying data dot length. Next, we'll run a for loop to execute each of the data. So we'll say for uint i i less than data dot length i plus plus we'll delegate call to the same contract so we'll say address this dot delegate call data of i delegate call returns two outputs boolean whether the function call was successful or not boolean i'll name it okay and any function output by calling delegate call so bytes I'll call it rest. We'll check that the function call was successful by making sure that OK is equal to true. And for this example, I'll use the custom error that is available since Solidity 0.8. So first, I'll define an error saying error delegate call failed. And then we'll type if not OK, then revert with delegate call failed. If the call was successful, then we'll store the result into the results array by typing results of i is equal to rest. I forgot to put memory here, so I'll do it right now. I'll hit control S just to make sure that the contract compiles. And we are now done with this contract. The next step is to add this functionality to this contract, test multi-delegate call. And we'll do that by having this contract inherit this multi-delegate call contract. So I'll type is multi-delegate call. And now this contract has the function multi-delegate call. So we'll be able to call this function to call both test func1 and func2 in the same transaction. Now to use multi-delegate call, we need to prepare the data. Call to function1 with these parameters and call to function2 must be ABI encoded. So I've created a helper function to ABI encode the function call to func1, passing in the parameter uintx and uinty, and also ABI encode func2. We'll compile the contract and then execute multi-delegate call to call func1 and func2. I'll hit Ctrl S to compile the contract, and then we'll deploy test multi-delegate call and the helper contract. Scroll down and then open both contracts. To call multi-delegate call, we'll need to prepare the data. So to call func1, the data, for the input, I'll pass in 1 and 2. 
and get the data. That is the data that we need to paste in here. And for func2, that is the data that we need to pass in here. So next I'll prepare the data for multi-delegate call by typing brackets, double quote, paste the data for the first function call, and then paste the data for the second function call, and then close the brackets. And then we'll call multi-delegate call. The transaction was successful, so I'm gonna open the transaction logs and look for their logs. You can see here that the event log was emitted for func1, and the caller is this address, starting with 0x5b3. If I scroll up, you can see here that it matches this account. So message.sender is this account. Now scrolling down a little bit further, you can see that func2 was also called, and message.sender is also equal to this account. Now if we were to use multi-call to call func1 and func2, then message.sender will not be equal to this address. It will be equal to the contract address of multi-call. So that is the benefit of using delegate call to batch function calls. Now, multi-delegate call can be a dangerous contract to add to your contract. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say that inside this contract, I have a function called mint, and it increments the balance of message.sender for the amount of ether that was sent. Let's see what happens when we have multi-delegate call with this function mint. And I've also added a function get mint data to get the data to call the function mint with multi-delegate call. So I'll compile the contract and we'll redeploy these contracts. And then I'll show you an example of calling mint and how it introduces a bug. So we'll deploy test multi-delegate call and the helper contract again, scroll down, and then open the two contracts. For this example, we'll call multi-delegate call and call the mint function multiple times. So we'll get the data for get mint data and that is the data to pass to multi-delegate call. And we'll call multi-delegate call on the mint function three times. So I'll prepare the data, bracket, the call data for mint, paste it three times. And when we call the function mint, we'll say we'll send one ether. Scroll down and then call multi-delegate call. The transaction was successful. So let's check the balance of the user that just called multi-delegate call. Remember, we just sent one ether. And if you look at the function mint, then our intention is that the balance of message.center increases by the amount of ether that was sent. And we sent one ether. Scroll up, so I'll copy this address, and we'll check the balance. Notice that this is not one ether anymore. This is three ether. So what happened? When we use multi-delegate call to call the function mint three times, message.value is one ether, since we only sent one ether. Message.sender is this account over here. But since we called it three times in the same transaction, it incremented the balance three times. So that is how multi-delegate call can be a dangerous contract to add to your contract. It is also a useful contract, so if you want it to add to your contract, be sure to review your contract before adding it.